Hello fellow Araxians. It's been a while since I've done a state of the game video. Last time I did a really long video for this. It covered a wide range of topics and it all came together to give a picture of where we were at. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. I'm going to cover a whole bunch of topics in a series of short videos. For the people that are just watching to kind of keep track of the game, see where it's at, decide if they should dip their toes back in, it'll be a good primer that brings you up to speed on where things are. And for everyone else that's currently playing, let's have a good discussion about these topics as they exist in the game. Give me your opinions and feedback on what's good, what's bad, and where things need to go in the future. So today we're going to be talking about alerts. There are a bunch of mini events that lead up to the final continent lock alert, which is just like the main alert event you may remember from years ago. It used to be two hours, it is 90 minutes now. The mini events include the Aerial Anomaly Alert, which you're watching here, the Facility Alerts, where you're trying to capture the most of either tech plants, amp stations, or biolabs. There are the Large Outposts Alerts, where you are trying to control the most large outposts by the end of the alert timer. And then there's one more alert that was recently announced that's not in the game yet. You can go back and watch my summary on the recent dev stream, and that'll give you a little bit more information there, because I'm not going to cover that one as it's not in game yet. So, big picture on alerts. The hot new progression currency is called ISO 4, and that's what you use to buy and upgrade implants. You can use certs or daybreak cash to get these, but outside of a few directives, alerts are how you grind out ISO 4 and implants. All of the different alert types have some participation rewards and improved rewards if you win those alerts. The implant packs that drop are like any implant pack and you can earn the exceptional implants through them. Another thing to note is you can earn cosmetics through alerts. I have seen a lot of complaints about the limited amount of cosmetic items you can earn just in game rather than buying them. So it's certainly not a straight line to acquire them, it's not just a grind. But every time you win a continent lock alert, you do have a chance at winning an item. Decals are very common but you can earn a whole range of cosmetics from camo, infantry armor, to vehicle tires or antennas or exhaust. All of that stuff is in the alert drop pool now, along with a few unique rare weapons that you can only get access to through alert victories. So let's cover the boring alerts first. The facility capture alerts. These don't work, which the devs expected. The community have been calling for these to go back into the game for a long time. The problem is what they're remembering is the epic cross-continent alerts. So when you'd be fighting for biolabs across a couple continents, the reality is the population is no longer large enough to support the cross-continent facility alerts. So they wisely just use single-continent facility alerts. Unfortunately, these alerts tend to not be very eventful. There are a few continents that favor one warp gate to hold either multiple tech plants or multiple biolabs. So they do land in someone's favor sometimes. The advent of the router has made it possible to take some of these difficult bases. But overall, 90% of the time, I'd say this alert type is generally ignored. And everyone's just happy to see him for the participation bonus, but they don't really care about really working towards the objective. And that scenario actually works pretty well. Kind of feels like something's going on you get a little closer to the end of the continent alert and people get a little bit of iso what's not to love let's pause and talk about what happens when you actually play the alert that's when things really start to go wrong in this one we were coming down to the wire on the end of an amp station alert on hawson and vs just weren't in it they couldn't affect the alert so every nc on the map was attacking the adjacent base and the tr were defending it I took an infiltrator with a router and a gate shield diffuse flash and snuck into the amp station behind them. And then we abandoned the base we were defending behind and spawned in every possible Terran soldier. Now obviously we could only get the TR that was with 100 meters of that router, so that wasn't a lot. And the NC, understandably, defending their only amp station, spawned in every single new conglomerate soldier on the continent. This was the most disastrous fighting planets I'd have ever been part of. It was just a massive mess of grenades and pop-in. 
By the time we got wiped out, we had light assaults with shotguns just materializing in front of us. I don't know how large the fight was, all we know was 96 plus versus 96 plus. But what I can tell you is Planetside has no ability to manage that large of a fight. So any sort of mechanic that would encourage players to ball up in that tight of an area on a map is a very, very, very bad idea. Now I realize this is an anomaly where people actually tried at the alert. And this alert type is really based on no one really caring. So I don't really know what that means. It's a fine alert as long as no fucks are given. <clears throat> Man, I'm still salty about losing this alert. When we got overrun, pops were still pretty even. We just literally could not see what we were dying from until they were in the middle of us. Okay, moving on. The next alert type is the outpost alerts, where you have to fight for control of large outposts on the map. Whoever has the most at the end of the timer wins. And this is a really solid alert. It's not super inspiring because it's just like, okay, do what you always do. And whoever holds the most at the end wins something. But it, what it does is it makes sure people have to stay spread out on the map. Balling up on one large outpost is going to lose you a different one. And it does mean your normal play has a little bit extra meaning. If you end up defending that tower base during the alert, then it's like you contributed something rather than just farming. Or if you attack that large three-point base and succeed, maybe that's what you were going to do anyways at that point in the map, but now it contributes to an alert. So it's not something that it's really like, hey, this is the answer. This is the solution. This is a meta here, okay? We've really landed on something. But it's like, you know, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It gets you some ISO. It's something to kind of work on. If you're a platoon leader, you can try to collect as many large outposts as possible. I'm going to rate this alert getting a pair of socks for Christmas. It's not something that's super exotic and thrilling, but it's functional and useful and you needed something and this fills the role really well. Okay, now let's get into the biggest mini event. The Aerial Anomalies. Objectives for aircraft are long overdue. They're generally left out. Sure, they help fights by engaging vehicles, delivering infantry, blowing up spawns. They certainly play an important role, but since they're generally not going down to the ground and flipping points, a lot of times it feels like they sort of have to stay out of objective play. Aerial anomalies change that. It's an alert where you have to be an aircraft to win points to play the objective. And sure, infantry or tanks can get a sky guard or a burster out, but again, they're really the supporters rather than the guys that are taking the point. Now the whole business of mounting up and flying off to an aerial anomaly is pretty epic to see all those aircraft take off. And what is cooler than massive mid-air battles? Air is tough, because it's a very unforgiving place. The gap between an amateur pilot and a skilled pilot is much wider than someone just starting out on infantry. There's a lot of tools at your disposal as infantry where you can still be effective and useful, even if you don't really have your aim down. Whereas once you're in an aircraft, you gotta be able to maneuver well and aim well, or you will just get chewed up by a more experienced pilot. Aerial anomalies create big enough fights where you don't just end up 1v1 versus an ace. You can go into these fights, dodge around, find some cover, attack one ESF, disengage, attack another, and basically have an opportunity to stay up in the air long enough where you can start to sort of get the hang of it, and engage other pilots that are on your skill level. They've changed the visual effect of the air anomaly since this footage. It's now a large purple sphere rather than the white lines you see. As long as you are within the sphere, you are generating points for your faction. Don't fly too close to the center though, or you will take chunk damage from the anomaly. So we've covered a lot of the good things. They're awesome, they're epic, they're big. You can start to fly without getting immediately owned. Sometimes. The bad part of these alerts is snowballing. They really only seem to be worth participating in if your faction is in the lead or is at least competing. There is really no way to stage a comeback. Once one of the factions has established aerial dominance, that's basically it. Game over. Many of these alerts 
devolve into hovering around the aerial anomalies and racking up points just to make it to the arbitrary 15,000 point number. So when they do work, they're great. When they don't, they're terribly boring. But the one thing is, jumping back to the performance concerns, if they work too well and everyone participates, which I would say doesn't really happen anymore, it has that same effect of drawing way too many people to too small an area on the map, and you start getting those large pop-in effects. I find the best I find the best aerial anomaly alerts happen at kind of off-peak times. When you really get between 3 and 12 participants from each faction, that way they don't snowball quite as much. You could still make a comeback and knock the other team off the point, and you don't have to deal with massive amounts of pop-in. All that being said, these are long overdue epic aerial battles, and I think it's a great addition. I look forward to them adding more mini events during the continent. And then one other mini event that I didn't really cover because it's not actually an alert, but just want to make you aware of in case you're wondering why the map might look like this. This happens whenever a new continent opens up. It's a warp gate stabilization mini event. They did this to ensure there's some good fights until the continent really kicks off or it can stay in a small lattice like this if it's a low pop time. So it just helps focus the fights in between big peak times on major continents. Just be aware there are no rewards for that event. So guys, that's your alert rundown. If you haven't been on in a while, that kind of explains what the end game is right now. If you have been on and playing, please let me know your thoughts. What do you like about them? What do you want to see changed? What type of ideas do you have for a mini event? And it's always fun to see, after one of the big alerts, a big galaxy crash heading to the enemy warp gates, like the days of old. Bonus Bastion fleet carrier that fell out of the sky in this footage. Anyways, that's all for now, fellow Araxians. And until next time, I will see you, Planetside.